We finally got the official college football playoff committee's rankings of the top 25. Wait, something... Let's just, um... What if we... Good to be back, huh? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. You are a good sport. This is College Football Media, and on this channel we talk college football teams, trends, and traditions, all the way to logos, history, and predictions. If that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing for in-depth college football content. BYU messed up. The rankings have been released. I assume we have all seen them now. Alabama 1, Notre Dame 2, Clemson 3, and Ohio State 4. I don't have a huge problem with that because throughout the season that should sort itself out. But BYU, they messed up and it was their own doing. In the AP poll, they're in the top 10. They're around that 7, 8, 9 range, the same as Cincinnati is. I believe around Monday, early in the week, the University of Washington, the Pac-12 team, the Huskies, contacted BYU, reached out and asked if they wanted to play Washington, if they wanted to play, meet, and have a non-conference game. BYU had the opportunity to play a Power 5 team, a good Power 5 team at that, and they turned it down. Why did they turn it down? They said that they wanted to see where their standing was in the playoff committee's eyes first. They thought that they had or might have had a good enough resume to be in the top 10, maybe the top 6, and have a shot at making the playoff with the resume as it stands. And I think that wasn't a bad assumption, but such bad publicity coming out about turning down a Power 5 offer to play a game this weekend, that bad publicity, I legitimately believe, put them down, bumped them down, and now they're not in the top 10. They're ranked number 14. And that will be a hard, difficult climb back up to even have a shot at getting in the top four. I don't think it's going to happen. And it's all because of that bad publicity of turning down the Washington game. If they had said yes to that game, I believe they would be ranked number eight, maybe number nine. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Um, and yes, their strength of schedule is not that great, but what how much is really different from them in Cincinnati? I don't think too much, other than they had the opportunity and turned it down. So, this is not the player's fault. That's what hurts, at least in my opinion, is that as a player, and you feel for those kids, this is not their decision. They would have gone and played Washington, I'm sure, if it was on the schedule. But unfortunately, the people above them and really probably the people above the coach as well are the ones that cost the team this opportunity. That is a shame. Now the players don't have the opportunity that they could have had. They don't have an opportunity to play Washington and they really don't have an opportunity to get in the playoff. Not because of anything they've done, it's not in their control, but the people above them. And that's really sad um, to think that that's the reason. But frankly, I believe when you boil it down, that is what happened. Um, it's sad, but all eyes turn towards Cincinnati. And of course, the bad publicity that BYU has received from media and personalities on Twitter, I think is deserved. I think um, there's, it's an honest assessment of saying it's a bad decision. Um, but it's just, we need to make sure that we frame it in the right direction, that it's the administration, frankly, that has caused this. Um, it was their decision to make. They're the ones to blame. It's not the players' faults. Um, and so I hope that we remember that. With that being said, attention turns, as I said, toward Cincinnati. They're in the American Athletic Conference, so I think it's a plus to be in a conference, whereas BYU is independent. They're ranked number seven. Everything above them should sort itself out. Notre Dame and Clemson will play each other. If Ohio State wins out, then they should be in. Um, and then you have three SEC teams. And the best thing for Cincinnati would probably be for Alabama to win out. Um, if that happens, there's a chance Texas A&M could still sneak in. But 
if they play a close game, if Texas A&M loses a game, Cincinnati is right there to seize the opportunity. Further down in the rankings is Oregon and USC. They're the closest chance that the Pac-12 has to making the playoff. I'm not very optimistic about that turning out and working out for the Pac-12. I just, it doesn't look like they're prepared to play football. And that's not really the, it's not solely the team's fault because they've had a lot more obstacles to overcome on the West Coast dealing with legislation. They just weren't as prepared. They couldn't be because of the pandemic. Therefore, their teams just don't look as complete. They still have games to play. That is true, but right now, I don't think the Pac-12 is in a position to uh, work their way up and make the playoff. So, if things work out and say A&M and Florida, neither one are in the playoff, Cincinnati is right in a position to have a shot. I, frankly, would be very interested to see it. I hope they get the opportunity, and I would love to see them in the playoff. Um, and if that be the case, then they do have a legitimate chance at being one of the best four teams in the country. And that's what the committee's job is to do. So, um, of course, there's a lot of other things that we could talk about. Of course, the big conferences. Big 12 is kind of out. Pac-12, as I mentioned, I think is kind of out. SEC has a good amount of teams in the, in the rankings uh, to begin with. Of course, Alabama won. Texas A&M and Florida right there at 5 and 6. And Georgia at 9. Um, which could be a little high for Georgia, but JT Daniels had a great, great showing uh, last week. Um, of course, I don't really think they'll have a chance to work up into the playoff, but um, as a whole, of course, the ACC, everything comes down to between Notre Dame and Clemson. I don't think it's too bad of um, a showing to put Clemson ahead of Ohio State. I don't really have a problem with that because their only loss is to Notre Dame. Ohio State's played a few less games. It will sort itself out. Um, and, of course, Trevor Lawrence has been out. They've had games postponed. So I think Clemson as a whole, we haven't really seen the complete team um, that we expect to see at the end of the season. So I don't really have a problem with it. Um, they played Notre Dame really, really close, too. So um, I think the top four, I think it makes sense. Pretty justifiable. Um, might have a couple, you know, discrepancies. But, as a whole, I don't have a huge problem with it. But, BYU messed up, and Cincinnati has the door cracked. Maybe it will be an open opportunity for them, and they can uh, get in. Be a lot of fun to see. So, let me know your opinion in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, and consider subscribing for in-depth college football content. Should have another video coming out this week, so if you want to make sure that you're subscribed for that video, then you can turn your post notifications on so you don't miss it before Saturday. Thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. Until next time, be good now.